Ever since I can remember when I was a tiny, tiny little girl, I've been very uh, curious and very adventurous. And um, at first I was content with uh, exploring the, you know, the world of nature and my neighborhood and um, people. And, and then uh, at a certain point, um, it was when I started getting put to bed before I was tired. And um, so I was still um, wanting to do something. And I came upon something where I would um, close my eyes and explore the world with my eyes closed. So I thought of that as the, as there were two worlds, eyes open and eyes closed. And what I discovered with my eyes closed is that um, looking back now, it's like I discovered my presence. And I would do things like play with my breath, with making my breath go as long as I could, and um, with making myself very, very small or, and then very, very large. And um, I, it seems like I, I thought of the worlds as, as two different worlds, the inside world and the outside world. And that's something that it feels like it's still sticking with me, where I see the world, you know, two different worlds. And um, I've been able to get a feeling of the same kind of feeling that I get when it, with my eyes closed when I do things like uh, spend time alone in nature. Or um, recently I took a road trip. And on the road trip, I was going through beautiful country and I didn't have an agenda. I was just going. And so it was very timeless. And so I had that same sort of feeling that I, you know, that I get when I close my eyes. Um, but my question is, um, I feel like it's almost a habit that I've developed um, that where the worlds are separated. And I would like to figure out um, ways of integrating those parts of myself or bridging them or you know, something like that. Bridging these two worlds between the the the, the inner world, the, the the distinction or separation between the inner world and the outer world. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, that th there's a. Um, it, it's legitimate to feel this distinction because there, there is a difference. Uh, not a distinction, but there is a difference between the inner world and the outer world. The inner world takes place inside your finite mind. In other words, none of us can see what you are thinking or feeling now. So your inner world is is unique to your finite mind. It's private in, in that sense. But the, the outer world you share with other people. In other words, it's not limited to your finite mind. It's still within consciousness, but it's outside your finite mind. And the easiest way to think about this is the dream world. When you dream at night, you dream a world within your own mind that is made of your own mind. But in order to view that world, you enter into your own dream and you view that world from the perspective of a separate subject of experience in your dream. Let's call her the dreamed character. So there's the dreamer's mind who dreams the world within herself, but the dreamer's mind collapses into the mind of the dreamed character within the dream from whose perspective she knows the dream. So the dreamed world takes place outside the dreamed character's mind, but inside the dreamer's mind. So this world takes place outside 
each of our finite minds, but inside consciousness. In other words, we're not solipsists here. We don't think that all there is to this outside world is the content of our own mind. So that, that, that is why you feel that the difference between the inner world and the outer world, that there is a difference at a certain level. Just as there's a difference between the inner world of the dreamed character and, and the outer world that she perceives. However, from the perspective of the dreamer's mind, both the inner world of the dreamed character and the outer dreamed world are all an expression of her own indivisible mind. So, likewise, the world inside of us that seems to be made of mind, that's thoughts, feelings, images, memories, etc., and the world outside of us that seem to be made out of stuff that is separate from us and independent of us, namely matter, is in fact, are in fact two facets of the same indivisible reality. And when we experience beauty or love, what we are experiencing is our shared reality. In the case of beauty, with the object, and in the case of love, with the other. In other words, the experiences of beauty and love are interventions, intrusions into our dualistic way, of, intrusions of reality into our dualistic way of perceiving. In other words, when we feel beauty, what we are feeling is our prior oneness with the apparently outside world. And when we feel love, love is the, exactly the same experience, but in relation to an animal or a person. We are feeling our, our shared being with the apparent other. So don't expect with this understanding uh, for the illusion of separation or otherness to disappear. The illusion continues. It is only possible to see the world from the perspective of a separate subject of experience. We can be sure that if the Buddha or Ramana Maharshi were sitting here in this room, they would see the world in exactly the same way we see it. They would see their world from the perspective of their body. It's the only way it's possible to see a world from a location. It doesn't have to be necessarily be located in a body, but it's from a location. That doesn't disappear. It's not the illusion that disappears. It's not maya that disappears. It's ignorance that disappears. The illusion remains. The ignorance goes. Well, I guess part of what I'm wanting is to, like, when I, my eyes are closed, I feel the, you know, presence, like, uh, I am very strongly. And when my eyes are open, it's like sometimes vision gets in, you know, the visual <laughs> of the world gets in okay. the way. Okay, so say to yourself now, I am seeing. Just say, I am seeing. Is that not true of your experience? I, I am seeing. Okay, yeah. so now f f f f face the experience to which you refer when you say, I am seeing. Just be aware, L leave, you leave everything else on, okay. on one side. Just be aware of the experience, I am seeing. And without turning away from it, emphasize the I am aspect of the experience. Mm. Is there any part of the experience of seeing that is not pervaded by I am. Not when I put the I am, uh, when, I, when I put the emphasis on I am, then that But helps. when you put the emphasis on I am, does it suddenly create the I am, or does it just no. reveal what was already there, but mm -hmm. apparently obscured due to the colorful nature of mm -hmm. seeing? Mm -hmm. So you don't need to turn away from the seeing, or, or, or change it, or even close your eyes. In fact, I, I recommend you you're obviously very familiar with your own being when your 
eyes are, when you close your eyes, it, it's obvious that the entirety of your experience is pervaded by yourself, mm -hmm. by your self-awareness. But then when you open your eyes, awareness seems to jump, to, to retreat inside the body. Mm -hmm. That is, other than awareness, seems to be projected outside. Mm -hmm. So now you, you keep your eyes open when you're meditating okay. and just turn towards the experience to which you refer when you say, I am seeing. But don't let the seeing eclipse the I am. Mm -hmm. There is no part of the experience of seeing that is not saturated with I am. In fact, even that suggests that there is something called seeing and that there is something called I am which pervades it. No, the screen doesn't pervade the movie. There is no such thing as a movie independent of the screen to be pervaded or not to be pervaded by it. There is just the screen modulating itself in the form of the movie. So it's not even that the experience of seeing is pervaded by I am. You, you, you cannot peel the experience of seeing off I am and say, look, this is seeing and this is what I am. Mm -hmm. that the seeing is a modulation of what I am. That is a modulation of knowing or awareness. Mm -hmm. So just turn fully to when you're walking in nature, just go turn fully towards the experience you're having and see that it, it, it is not just pervaded by, but made of what I am. That is made of knowing or consciousness. And that then, after some time, you'll, you'll, you'll laugh. The very experience that once seemed to veil its reality is now seen to shine with it. Mm. It helps to think, just to think of putting the emphasis more on the I am. That's yes, like, yes. That'll be the, to, to begin yeah. with, it's legitimate to make this distinction. Mm -hmm. Why? Because at the moment you've overemphasized the yes. experience of seeing. So mm -hmm. now to balance that, overemphasize the experience I am. Okay. Until it's quite clear to you that seeing doesn't veil what I am. Mm -hmm. When that's clear to you, you can collapse the distinction between the two because the experience of seeing is not composed of two parts. Right. One part called seeing and one part called knowing. Mm -hmm. It's just a single experience made only of pure knowing. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs>